Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and another video here. Today is another Topic Tuesday. If you are not aware, Topic Tuesday is an Instagram that posts topics every week that you can answer either here or on YouTube. I'll have them linked down below as well as my own personal Instagram so you can go check either of those out. I'm doing them out of order just because, I don't know, I like to pick and choose. So right now we're going to be doing what is your favorite brand of polish? Now you know me, I can never just choose one, I can never be simple. So I've broken it down into just three, just three categories, that's all. So I have favorite mainstream like fun finishes, favorite mainstream creams, and then um, favorite indies, I just picked two because I don't really gravita gravitate towards indies as far as creams go. I have indie creams, but there's never like an indie brand where I'm like, yes, I gotta buy all their creams. Because for me, creams are just a simple thing that you can get a bunch of mainstream. Indie is where I look for all the fun, crazy, innovative finishes and ideas and things like that. So my favorite mainstream brand that is kind of like on the crazier side or just a little bit more innovative with finishes is without a doubt China Glaze. I think that they're probably the biggest part of my collection right now. And that's just because, you know, I'm really attracted to within every collection, it seems like they do at least a couple different fun finishes. And, you know, I like the first one that comes to my mind right now is like the Jollywood collection last winter, the uh, the tinsely shade, the one that was green. Now I can't remember the name of it. I was just talking to somebody about this on Instagram too, but I'll pop a picture up here. You know, they really take those fun finishes and even if they don't always look the best, the concept behind them, the driving idea behind them really hits home. And you know, yeah, with their creams, they do have a lot of more repeat colors. I think you see that with most mainstreams, they just kind of rename polishes and put them back out. But with their more fun shades, I really don't see a lot of overlap. You know, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, but I've never seen like one of their crazier or more fun finishes and thought, I already have something like that from them. You know, like they just released their Halloween collection and you know, it's, it's the middle of August, but I bought it, it's back there, I'm gonna do a review. But it was, it was like two shimmers, a couple duo chromes, there's like a, like a more matte color. I don't know if that one also has shimmer. And then there's like a hollow, you know, it was, everything was fun and different. And the, the theme was kind of like space. It's like extraterrestrial kind of a, a polish collection. And I just feel like for the most part, they really nailed it. There's one that's kind of a weird outlier, but, and then there was the, it was like OMG collection or something like that well before I got into polish, it was like a six piece hollow collection. And that's one of the, like, I feel like you rarely, until recently saw very much hollow in the mainstream. And if you did see hollow in the mainstream, it just wasn't very good, but those were really nice. And then they did an OMG flashback where they remade basically those six shades and re-released them for like a nostalgia purposes. And now I have the, um, I have the newer one, the OMG flashback, because I bought that. And then I ended up getting my hands on the original. And both of them are really good, really hollow packed for a mainstream. And so I'm really impressed by their quality. And ultimately, I just think it's impressive that they really seem to try to put out a lot of crazy and fun stuff. You know, I think that instead of taking what I would consider like the safe route with very simple creams. I think that they really go outside of the box with a lot of their stuff. And, you know, they may not, some of those ideas might not appeal to your average uh, polish wearer. Like I know, you know, people like my mom aren't gonna pick up that green tinsel shade because they're just gonna be like, when am I ever gonna wear this? You know, I feel like China Glaze does a good job of appealing to the nail polish hobbyist and lover. And that's why I really like them. Now, as far as creams in the mainstream go, I definitely have to stick with Orly. I really like a lot of things about Orly. I think that, you know, their bottle size is pretty impressive. I love the rubberized cap. I think it's really easy to paint with. I think that 
Uh, the consistency of their creams really works well for me. It's pretty rare that I've had an Orly that was uneven or streaky or anything like that. And honestly, like, they don't seem to do too many crazy finishes aside from the shimmer here and there. At least, like, I quick browsed their website, they have a couple toppers, and I looked in my own collection, and I just seem to be drawn to their creams. Now, I think that as far as overlap in their color palette goes, they're just as guilty as every other mainstream, but I don't seem to have too many overlaps in the similar colors I do have. You know, I can pull them out and I'm like, yeah, these are pretty different. They might be like a little bit lighter or darker in tone say, of the same color, but I'm like, yeah, these are distinctly different enough that if I painted them next to each other, you could tell a difference. Maybe it's like someone like my boyfriend might not be able to tell, but you know, what do they know, right? And just another thing about their color palette, when I was browsing their website, I felt like they had a really good balance of types of shades. And what I mean by that is they had a really good range of more neutral or uh, wearable colors. You know, if you work in a more professional setting or an office or something where you cannot wear those types of co like bright colors, they have a lot for you. And on the other end of the spectrum, tons of brights, tons of really fun, like wham bam in your face, kind of neon-y type stuff. And so, and additionally about their color palette, I feel like they have a really good range of like types of colors. And what I mean by that is when I was scrolling through their website really quick, just to get an idea of what they had, not just what I bought, it seemed like they had a really good variety of neutral colors, you know, like skin tone or like mauvey pinks that are like easy to wear, a little bit of like those slate grays, stuff that you could get away with in a more professional setting or an office setting where you may not be as allowed to wear so many flashy colors. And then on the flip side, they have tons of really like punchy, bright, fun colors. Like I really like, um, the first one that pops in my head is, is called Beach Cruiser. I'll throw up a picture here. Just really bright, fun, in your face, summery colors. And I feel like they really like balance that well in a way that, you know, some other brands may not like Essie, for example, when I think of Essie, predominantly it's going to be like neutrals and more subtle. And then they have fun pops here and there. And, you know, they, they do have a lot of like fun colors, but when I think of like the brand in my mind, the first thing I think of is at the store, there's like 10 rows of pink before you get into any other colors. So that's why I really like Orly. And also, I'm super interested in um, their founder, Jeff Pink, put out a memoir pretty recently. I got an email about it within the last year. And it's just about his life and, and the founding of Orly and just how that all went. And so I'm really interested to read not only that, but um, what is it, Susie, is it Susie Weiss Fishman, uh, the founder of OPI or the co-founder of OPI. She also has a book and I, I don't know about you guys, but I really love to, when, you, when I get into a hobby, learning about how stuff is made and processed and all that. So I really want to read uh, either of those books. Let me know down below if you guys have picked those up and if they're worth a read. Okay, indies. So like I said before, I don't really focus on indie creams just because I find that the special finishes is where indies really shine. However, that's not to say that indie creams are bad. In fact, the ones I have are really good quality. It's just when I'm buying indies that are a little bit on the pricier side, I tend to pick colors that maybe I couldn't find in the mainstream. Now, obviously that's not always the case. Like. With Enchanted, I bought, there was a green called Grass Stain. I had to have that. And you know, there's a few here and there where I've picked up some more unique looking cream colors that might not be as easily found in like your OPIs and Orly and all that. But for the most part, like I said, special finishes is where it's at for me with the Indie and Boutique polishes. And just another uh, little disclaimer. So with my mainstream stuff, those are like favorites that are tried and true throughout years of collecting. However, I only recently have started getting like diving headfirst into indies. So I don't have as much experience on the indie market as I do with mainstream. So I don't know if I would call these like my diehard favorites because 
honestly, they're like all my favorite. I love them all. I love when people take a passion and they really throw their whole heart into it. So me saying like, oh, I like these the most is not saying that like, oh, these other ones are bad. It's just, honestly, these are the ones that I'm wearing the most of right now. So the first one I've chosen is a newer brand to me. Just like, uh, I think at the beginning of quarantine when I was scrolling through Instagram, I found them and they're called Karaya Polish. And they have this cute little like monster looking logo and that was really what drew me in. I thought it was really cute. Their bottle shape is kind of interesting. And so I put a few on my wish list, and then I subscribed to their newsletter and that was that. And then a couple months ago, I got an email on the newsletter saying, hey, we're having a massive blowout sale because I'm about to give birth and I need to basically clear the way. And so I picked up, I think five or six, and I have worn almost all of them already because they're just so beautiful. I love, like I bought a duochrome called Jack and Ennis. There is this one from her cafe collection I got and it's this kind of like murky, purpley, browny, gray, very descriptive, I know. And I really loved that. Just um, everything she puts out seems to have a lot of thought behind the color and name and theme and all that matching up, which I'm really into. And I just think that her themes are really cute. Like she did one that was like Famous Couples, which is where like Jack and Ennis comes from and like the cafe collection. I know like a lot of brands do something like that, but it's always just fun when they do that. I feel like cafe collections are a really good way to showcase nudes for every skin tone. So I really enjoyed that. I think that they are still on a break because like I said, she did just give birth. So kind of waiting to see, you know, how that plays out when they'll come back, do a big restock or something. And then I'll pick up some more that were on my wish list because I wasn't able to pick them all up since, you know, everybody seemed to be running to the sale all at the same time. The other brand that I would put in my like favorites for now category I mean, they're always going to be favorites. It's just, this is what I'm wearing the most, is 9-0 Lacquer. Now, Just Face 90 was one of the first nail polish swatchers that I ever started watching. It was like her and Miss Holly Berry's were like the first two nail channels that I ever got into. And so I kind of watched as her brand came out and she grew and added things. And I always wanted to buy something from her, but I just never... Did I don't know. It's something about ordering from a new place for the first time. I had this weird like mental block for some reason. But then uh, she was pregnant and moving. And she also did like a kind of blowout clearance sale to move some stock so it was easier to move. So I ended up picking up a ton of her, what are they, the smoothie bar collection. I got those. And actually I did place an order before that for her Animal Crossing collection. That was really what sent me over the edge and I was like, I gotta buy this. So I have the full Animal Crossing collection. I have a pretty sizable chunk of the Smoothie collection. And I think that's about it. But like the Smoothie collection, the finishes of those, like they're all the same finish. It's like a kind of crelly base with these black shards that kind of look like when you get like mint chocolate chip or chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream it kind of reminds me of that but the colors are so pretty and I love like the shards really amplify and like they're really contrasting to the the base itself so I felt like that was really creative she has her the Animal Crossing collection like I said I felt like she had such a wide variety of finishes in that everything had you know, really fun names that really emulated the series as well as the colors really went along with it. She's done uh, Men of Letters collection, which was the Supernatural collection. I didn't buy anything from that, but I've seen a couple of the polishes. They're really good. I know that um, Cork Manicure is one of her favorite polishes is from that collection. So just a really good, very creative mind behind that uh, that brand as well. And she's also from Michigan, which, you know, always, I don't know what it is about me, but when I find out like somebody that I like or like have watched or who is famous is from Michigan, I'm just like, hell yeah. Cause like this state kind of sucks. <laughs> There's not much going on here. 
Um, the auto industry is dying. But yeah, so I think that she is also on a break because I kind of took a look at her website and doesn't seem like there's much going on there. But she also just had a baby, so I, it seems like every brand that I like is dying or going on hiatus or, or whatever because, you know, I also was really into Enchanted from like a... I'm just watching them perspective. I never bought anything from them. And then I got an email saying that they were shutting down indefinitely. So then I had to buy a bunch of those because I don't know if I'll get the chance to again anytime soon. So I got those and now they seem to be done. And then I bought a Bees Knees lacquer from Polish Pickup because I've always been, or not always, but recently I've been seeing them a lot on Instagram. I've seen a lot of swatches. And I follow them on Instagram and it's like, A, I love anything that has to do with bees. So if it's got the word bee in it, I'll probably buy it. But also um, just the colors, like she does really beautiful, really beautiful stuff. Just a lot of really cool multi and duo chromes. Um, I'm looking at her website right now. It's just like, just a lot of really pretty stuff. And um, so I was talking to somebody about that on Instagram. And then they told me that they heard somewhere that Bees Knees Lacquer might be closing down at the beginning of next year due to like health reasons and stuff like that. So I guess what I've learned is I'm not allowed to love any indie polishes or they will disappear. So maybe I should stay out of the indie market, huh? Well, anyways, that's it from me, guys. Let me know down below what is your top favorite brands, either mainstream or indie or boutique or whatever, and let me know why you like them so much, and maybe I can go check them out. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.